Welcome to the Trisexuals, a podcast about spreading your legs and opening your mind. Please be advised that you must be over 18 years of age to ride. Remember that the Trisexual cover adult themes and concepts and oftentimes use salty language. The f***ing, the f***ing f***tards from f***ing hell. For your safety and the safety of others, please keep your hands in your pants at all times. Enjoy the ride. In a world filled with boring sex toys, you need to find a trio you can trust to turn up the heat. This summer, it's time to live the fantasy with The Trisexuals, starring Lily Chameleon. Let's say this Twinkie represents the normal amount of sexuality on the internet. As of this podcast, it would be a Twinkie 35 feet long and weighing approximately 600 pounds. That's a big Twinkie. Max Chameleon. When this vibrator reaches 88 revolutions per second, you're going to see some serious shit. And Kit Curious. I've had it up to here with these motherfucking dicks on this motherfucking plane. Coming to a theater near you. Have a sex toy, we'll try it. Have a fetish, we'll try it. We masturbate and copulate to recreate and educate. We are the Trisexuals. Hello and welcome to the Trisexuals. I'm Max Chameleon. And I'm Lily Chameleon. And I'm Kit. And today we have quite the... uh, touchy subject to talk about today. Well, maybe, I don't know, maybe not such a touchy touchy subject. Penis size! Penis size! One of Lily's favorite things. (laughs) (laughs) She she could always use more penis size in her life. But, before we get to the fun, uh, let's do a bit of an update. So, Kit, I understand that you've been releasing some more reviews. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) I do. I've been slacking, though. I've only had a few here to... But they're mostly vibes. We've mostly got vibes. I've got a few uh, things, a couple things from Satisfier and uh, Ross Hillator. And I've got my Marilyn Monroe vibe. It's the uh, Jopin Cali. It's got a real pretty little shiny stone. And uh, one of my Twitter followers said, that looks like something Marilyn Monroe would use. And I'm like, yes, that's what I'm calling it from now on. So oh, that's okay. So th- that's to. not actually the name of it is the Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> no, no, no. But no. It, it's now I've adopted it because that's awesome. So when I first read that in the show notes, I assumed it was a vibe that you could only use when standing over an active air grate and, and having a whole <laughs> skirt down. I haven't tried that yet, but I'll have to. Ooh, okay. I think I've nothing to say to that. Uh, I, I'm just curious that what street that's going to be. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you've been feeling the vibe lately with all those vibe reviews. That's cool. Five, only five reviews. Still pretty impressive. Over here on the Carnal Chameleon side, we've released one review, uh, and that would be for the Stockroom Pup Play Hood in Mitts. These things are really cool, and we had a good time doing the, the review. And I believe we actually may have talked about these Hood in Mitts before on the podcast. So if you want to go and see what those look like and get a review from Lily and I, Go ahead and check it out and hear about how I drool all over myself. <laughs> and all over me. <laughs> yeah, and all over Lily, which is the best part. So, guys, what have you all been playing with? How about you, Kit? Um, what I've been playing with, actually, are a couple fun things from Split Peaches. Uh, the Screw You is one, and I just put the review up for this barely. And it's interesting because it, it looks like a big screw. I mean, it looks like it's got a ton of texture. But you, you want to twist it in rather than slide it in. And it actually is fairly smooth. So for me, I can't take a lot of texture for anal toys. And for me, this was like perfect. In fact, what I did with it um, that was perfect was use it for double penetration with the little mini riveter. So I have the riveter in two sizes. So I have lots of texture in the front, nice and smooth screw in the back. And that was really good, really good stuff. Oh, wow. So you have, awesome. like, double machine thing going on there yeah. with the bolts and nuts and bolts. <laughs> nuts and bolts. There you go. So with the, I have a question on the, the screw you. So you said you actually can, like, rotate that and, and screw it in to kind of insert it, right? Yeah. To, you don't want to try to, like, you know, 
put it in straight. You want to take it and twist it to insert, and it will twist just like a real screw. So but you're you screwing can, yourself, basically. Exactly. <laughs> but when you go to pull it out, you can either untwist it, which is you know smooth again, or what I like to do is actually pull it out, and you get each bump oh. of the thread. That's when kind you, of like mm, anal beads almost. That's yeah. That's kind of really good. It is. It really is well suited for an anal toy, I think. So, yeah, and it's got that nice tapered tip, too, that really helps with insertion. So, it's really good. So, speaking of nuts and bolts, <laughs> I believe that there's been another machine in our midst. Isn't that right, Lily? That is right, Max. I have actually been working on the review for the Mechanical Animal 1.5 from Frisky Beast, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it is a very attractive toy. Um, one of the prettier sculpts I've ever seen. Uh, it, it's it's just really great. And we're going to have a review coming out for that soon. So yep. look for that. And then once that one's done, the next on my list is the Intimate Melodies Nova, which is a sensual massager with three different type heads. All right. And what I've been looking at lately is a nice little deer butt. Uh, so this is the Snowball by Bad Dragon. It's a very tight toy, not quite as tight as the uh, shark toy that I reviewed from Bad Dragon, but still uh, quite tight. Um, we're going to have a review coming out for that soon, so look for that one. I think that's going to be the next one that comes out after this episode. Um, and then after that, I'm, apparently I'm on a whole butt kick because I'm going to be taking a look at the Primal Hardware Bunny Butt, which I've been using quite a bit and it's time to finally write a review for. Just in time for Easter. All right. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I should probably make that review come out around Easter time. Yeah, I already have the idea for the photos. I already have it in mind. I should get my Tanga eggs done for then, too. We'll do That's a whole idea. little Easter. Yeah. The Trisexuals Easter special. Oh, and, and I could special. do We're Frisky no Beast eggs. We do the Frisky Beast eggs, and we are no uh, stranger to eggs on this show. Right? No, we're not. <laughs> all right, guys. So now the subject that we've all been waiting for, and I've been dreading, <laughs> <laughs> and that is a discussion on penis size. So penis size, I don't even want to get into this. Right now. Oh, <laughs> it's such a it can be such a. This is actually a request from a listener That's right. to talk about this. So, That's right. We have been requested to talk about this. Thank you for the request. I think it's actually very important to talk about. It is a touchy subject. Um, uh, so being the one person on the show who actually has a penis, <laughs> I guess it's a fair <laughs> statement. Um, I, you know, I have some interesting perspectives on it. Uh, just so everyone knows, I know everyone's been asking this question since they've gotten to know me. My penis size is somewhere just slightly larger than six inches. Not much. We're not. We're not breaking any. Lily, you're giving me a weird. It's looks. like six and a half. It's, All it's right. pushing it. That's like okay. I mean, depending. And the, the size is. It, that's an interesting point. The size isn't always con consistent. At least in my uh, experience. I mean, it, it depending on how aroused you are, you can get a little bit extra length on there. Um, so yeah, I'm in that, that six and a half territory. Why are you laughing so Because all I can think about is when you're talking about, you know, the different lengths of how it, you know, it can fluctuate. All I can think of and to ask is, have you ever stuck your penis in a vacuum to make it bigger? Uh, Lily, you know the answer to that question because <laughs> you were there. <laughs> and no, we're not talking about a nice, safe, you know, penis pump, like, you you know, you, when used, uh, you know, carefully is actually safe. I actually used a vacuum cleaner. Uh, may, there may have been alcohol involved. Luckily, there was <laughs> no fatalities. Sure <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so, in, in, and that's a, a, another good point, though, is that, you know, certain things like um, using a penis pump can in, in temporarily increase your size. Uh Sorry, everyone out there, there is no permanent way to increase your, no safe permanent way to increase your penis size. Things like vacuum pumps are actually only going to be temporary, and you should be very careful with them. Uh, that's probably a subject we should cover in another episode. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, to, to guys, penis size seems to be an important thing. I think there's debate out there that in, in things you could say for both sides, if, you know, penis size is more important to the guys or to the, the girls or to whoever... But, uh, you know, it's something certainly that growing up as a male is talked about and, you know, treated 
very carefully. You know, a guy doesn't, well, unless he happens to be hung, he doesn't usually want his size to be well known by his friends. Uh, it's that whole locker room adage that was true when you and I were growing up that, you know, guys in locker rooms make fun of each other of their penis size. Uh, you know, I can't say I've ever seen that, but I also avoided locker rooms wherever possible and, uh, you know, very carefully undress myself underneath the towel whenever I'm in such a situation. And and it's funny because here I am talking about my sex life in front of everyone on the internet, and I'm okay with that and talking about crazy things like putting eggs in my butt. But still, when it comes to, like, physical in-person contact, I, I don't need my junk to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Lily, I happen to know that you have had experience with penises from time to time. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe what, just a little bit. What can you tell us about, you know, maybe the female perspective on penis size and, uh, you know, what how you feel about it? Well, that's, that's an interesting question because penis size is definitely something that, you know, as a female-bodied individual growing up, it was one of those things that you would laugh about. And then something you would talk about going, oh, now that we're actually having sex, I understand why guys, you know, might be with larger penises or smaller penises might have so, issues. So, hold on. You were talking about penis size before you were sexually active? Yeah. Like oh, was, yeah. Yeah, it was like a known thing. Um, like on the playground, mind you, I grew up in a very tiny, tiny town. So everybody talked about everybody else. Everybody picked on everybody. And in our playground, somebody was said, oh, so-and-so has a tiny penis, and you just made fun of him. You didn't know any oh. better. I guess I didn't realize this, so... And that's why so girls would what, would, would would, would, what manner would females talk about penis size? Like, just, just making fun of how small someone is? Yeah, or... making fun of how small someone is. And it was directly tied to a, a guy's ma- mas- masculinity. Masculinity. So if... They but were you're, on a you're track young team. children. Why do they need so much mascul- masculinity? It got more so when you got into uh, middle school, high sure. school, especially when a lot of those jocks are supposed to have like big penises, be big, tough, bulky guys, and some of them end up having the smallest penises out of everybody. Yeah, it it, it sounds like you're talking with some authority here. You happen to know. Uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, my understanding is is that your penis size starts normal, but every time you drive a large truck, it gets a little bit smaller. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> now, we are not saying people out there that drive big trucks have small penises. We are not saying that. I kind of believe that is what I just said, but, I, <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying it in jest. Yes. Um, as far as how females perceive penis size as an adult i have to say it can vary like as most people know there's different sizes there can be long short thin thick curvy straight and then you get into the whole thing when it's completely erect is it even flaccid anymore like is there any bounce to it there's definitely a lot of variance there there's so much um and so Lily and I, we're, we're swingers, so we've, um, you know, participated in parties where there's a lot of people having open sex, all protected, of course, especially in our case. And consent. And, and consensual, obviously. Um, but I would say that the penises range in all sorts of size, manner, you know, in every measure that you could think of. Cut, you name it. Um, now, my opinion, and maybe my, or, or my observation, and maybe my observation is different from your observation, was that there really wasn't, penis size in that atmosphere almost just wasn't a thing. Like, every once in a while, you might have someone say, like, oh, you know, so-and-so is, you know, really big. Like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of our one friend in particular that, mm-hmm. you know, everyone was kind of <laughs> joked around they wanted to play with. But, you know, even though there was oftentimes guys that were much larger than me, I never felt left out, and there, it certainly didn't seem like there was any sort of real preference for anyone to play with the uh, the bigger dicked individuals. In fact, I think I've heard a lot more of uh, women being concerned that someone might be too big for them. Right, which is a really big issue, especially for me because of my small stature. I mean, like one of my exes a long time ago, he had, it was huge and thick, right, and right. it hurt. Like, I didn't enjoy sex at all. 
And of course, I'm bigger than him, right? Because I'm the biggest you've ever had. <laughs> um, no. 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 Oh, all right. Well, I think I can live with that. But uh, so there was this one guy I was with that actually he had a much smaller penis size. We're talking maybe like two, three inches. Two, three inches erect. It was, erect. It was very small. This was back in college, and it just as a woman, I felt that. You know, even though it wasn't getting as hard as I had seen other penises, I felt it was my fault. You felt it was your fault. Like, maybe you're not turning them on enough to right. get them the full size. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that's a different take on, you know, that kind of thing. Is on both sides of the spectrum, you can have people that feel that embarrassment Absolutely. of how, how to handle that situation. I do feel, though, as people become more sexually open and talk about the stuff more and actually play, like, in the swing scenario, I feel like it becomes less of a an issue overall, right? Like, and when you realize how shallow, um, a a vagina can be in, in general, like seven inches, that that's big. That's bigger than most, uh, Mm -hmm. vaginas, I believe. So, you know, it's not like you really necessarily need all that size. I think it starts becoming a status symbol at some point. Um, so I have an interesting story for you guys. And this is actually the story of how Max thought for most of his life that he was had an exceptionally tiny penis. This is a true story. Also kind of sad. Um, So, growing up, I thought that I had a penis that was much smaller than average. The reason being is because they talked about penis size, and they said that the average penis size was around 6 inches or something like that, right? Problem was, they failed to mention to me (laughs) that that meant hard. Flaccid so versus I thought they were talking about flaccid penises, and I'm like, well, holy shit, I'm about five inches too short, <laughs> four or five inches too short uh, than average. So I thought that I had a tiniest penis, uh, a tiny penis for the longest time. And then when I was with my first girlfriend, they're like, oh no, that's not tiny. You're you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Kit, what have what have your experiences been with penis size? Well, I think penis size is irrelevant. Now, I've had partners under four inches. I've had them up to about eight inches. Eight inches? Yeah, I did. I I had a a pretty large partner. But the thing is, good sex doesn't just happen in the body. It happens in the mind. It happens in the chemistry and the things that are going on. And, you know, if you are creating that excitement and that eroticism, you will find ways to work around your size. Like, I'm very small endowed in the vagina. I mean, five inches, maybe five and a half if I'm super aroused. That's all I've got. But I could still have fun with a partner who is smaller or larger, which for me usually the case is they had more length than I needed. But it did not matter because the the connection and the other things that we were doing Absolutely. were great because most people assume like oh sex means penis and vagina or or penis and and, and anus or something like that mm-hmm. and that is is just such a, a a small view of of what sexuality is to me yeah. you know it's it's so much bigger than just the physical parts because you can have miserable sex with you know if it's just about a penis and a vagina, you can have miserable sex that way, or it can be good, and the difference is not in the body to Absolutely. me. So I think a lot of men feel a lot of shame and a lot of different yeah. kinds of things happening when it's really, they're focusing on the wrong thing to me. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, you're talking about, you know, kind of like this emotional side to it and, and not focusing on the mechanics of it. Um, I also feel even even with focusing on the mechanical side of it, there's so much more you can do than just penetration. And, yeah. um, you know, many women are into having, you know, obviously their clit uh, manipulated or vulva, anything mm-hmm. around the outside. You can do that with very little size, with a hand, with a tongue. There's ways to bring pleasure to someone, and it doesn't have to be penetrating them with a big dick. Exactly. And you know what else? If you are a little bit mismatched physically in size, 
there are all different kinds of sex positions you can do. Some that will help you penetrate deeper if you need that, and some that right. will help mm -hmm. you penetrate not as deeply. So you can work around that. There's just no issue yeah. at all here. Now, Do Lily and I actually have had to experiment with that because the difference in our height is is close to extreme. Uh, I mean, it, Lily, I mean, do we want to talk actual heights or not? Well, I'm five foot. All right, Lily's five foot tall. I'm over six foot tall, right? That's where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. Six foot tall. It's it's hard sometimes for us to get the right <laughs> position, but we've experienced positions that there's, you know, really deep penetration and when there's not so much penetration. It's, uh, you know, and that's all part of the fun. Sometimes, just for fun, I will penetrate Lily, like, very shallowly, like just, a, just like, a couple inches or so, and kind of build up, like, that's where the normal uh, depth is. And then all of a sudden, when she's nice and turned on, I'll go in and put my full length in, and, you know, she, she wasn't expecting it, because it just, you, you build up, like, that's exactly where the, the, the you mm -hmm. know, the size is, and then all of a sudden, there's a whole lot more, and that's a lot, uh, fun to do. And that's exactly. a great point, too, Max, because the G-spot is actually not as far in the body as most people think. Yeah, isn't it's it just like an, inch and a half to, like an inch and a half to two inches at yeah. most? Like, it's somewhere in there? In most, and, and for some people, less. For me, you can actually pretty much see it from the outside if I push out just a little bit. Like, it's right there. Oh, that's so right. It doesn't, I remember you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my G-spot, like, it's, yeah, I've got a big clump of tissue right there and you can see it really well at least the the nose of the g-spot the g-spot sort of is shaped like a ramp for most people and it runs back there are two or three different shapes but for most bodies it, it runs sort of back like a ramp so you can get that head of the g-spot with hardly any entry in at all hmm. so that raises an interesting point kit that means that presumably your g-spot could be directly licked like i don't think i could lick Lily's G spot. I'm I'm also tongue tied. I can't get my tongue out too far. But it must be pretty easy for your G spot to get licked. Is that right? I think that would be possible. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hmm, very interesting point to bring up there. Well, I'll have to uh, experiment a little more with that. Absolutely. So, getting back onto penis size, I'm curious. Do you guys? Do both of you think that maybe the whole idea of penis size is? something that is societally driven, especially in media driven in this country? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think that it, well, like I mentioned briefly before, I think that it's more status than it is anything else. I think that if we actually did have a culture based around, you know, because presumably the argument of penis size comes down to, is a guy capable of, of giving pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the assumption is that somebody who's small is not as capable of providing pleasure than somebody who's large. If our culture was actually concerned with giving pleasure, they would focus on other things other than penis size. The factors that go into a pleasurable <laughs> uh, sexual experience, like Kit alluded to, are much more varied than just that one factor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So since we're talking about penis size, uh, regardless of your penis size, there are ways that you can enhance your penis size and shape, and this is through use of sex toys known as sheaths. These things are really cool. We have a couple of them that we're going to talk about today. Um, and the basic premise is it can be either a closed-ended or open-ended toy, uh, like a cylinder. You put it over your penis. You usually have to use a little bit of lube because they tend to be tight. And it can, it can give your penis the appearance of a fantasy sex toy. Uh, we have a few that are uh, fantasy animal based, or it could just be, um, you know, non-specific to any sort of fantasy or animal and just have different shapes on it. In a way, uh, ribbed condoms are a form of penis sheath when you think mm -hmm. about it, right? You can put them on and they have like, you know, they have different uh, fun uh, shapes and ribs and bumps and stuff that you can wear to kind of enhance the sexual experience. So, uh, Lily, yeah. you are a connoisseur of these penis sheets. Oh my God, I know yes. that you enjoy them. So, uh, in front of us, we have... A lot. <laughs> um, we, we have a lot. Let me pull up my list here. Okay. In front of us, we have from Fetish Zone, the Canine Sheath, the Cadejo, the Equine. And from Bad Dragon, we have the Basilisk, Basilisk, Basilisk. the Basilisk, and the Cock Sheath. So... Why don't you tell us a little bit about these and what you <laughs> sure. enjoy? So, 
I guess let's go with the canine sheath first. So the canine sheath, I really, I do enjoy a lot because it's a thinner um, rubber than the uh, Cadejo. Yeah, the Cadejo is a bit thicker. These are both close-ended toys, and they're meant to have a canine style, mm -hmm. meaning that lower now, on down the shaft, they have a knot, which is something we've talked about in a previous episode. No, even though you say closed, there is a little hole for come to drip out, which right. can be really sexy, of course. Yeah. Just want to make sure I remember that piece. Um, now, as far as... These are good, but... <laughs> I like them, but unfortunately, because Max's penis is already so large, like, long for me, when he wears these, it That's actually true. puts an extra two or three inches, which can be a little hard to even get to the knot at all. Yeah. That is true. Um, also, additionally, we didn't touch upon this earlier. So even though I'm about average length, my uh, girth is actually a little bit ab above average. I don't really have a me measurement on it. But uh, needless to say, at the various swinging events and stuff I've been to, given the comparison, my cock tends to be a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. um, and these toys are not really made for someone with uh, a thicker uh, cock, but I still you can still stretch them, get them on. They just don't always seem... Uh, they don't always manage to keep the correct shape because they're a little bit wider than they should be. Right. Um, so one other nice thing about these sheaths, um, especially if you're a male-bodied individual, is that they are actually um, useful for both having sex, but if you don't have a partner to have sex with, you can actually use them as uh, for masturbation. Um, a lot of, and a lot of them actually have nice ribs or texture on the inside. You put a little bit of lube in there, and you can jerk off with it and also have in your hand like the feeling of having a fantasy or alternate cock. And that can be a lot of fun. I know a lot of my friends make use of that. And you could also use it even a different way of just putting in a regular dildo on the inside using That's lots right. of lube, of course. But you could uh, have it go on the inside and then have another toy to play for your back end or front end or however you want to play. Yeah, so even if you're you know female-bodied, you can make use of these toys. Um, I happen to know that Primal Hardware in particular has wearables, they call them, um, and they have rods that they sell separately that you can put in them and make it a solid toy. Mm -hmm. So you're almost kind of just buying the toy and you can use it in multiple ways. Um, so in front of us, we also have the Bad Dragon offerings. Uh, firstly, we have the Basilisk, which is kind of like a snaky, nubbed, rub, blah, 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 a sn it's kind of like a snaky, nubbed, ridged toy. It's also very thick. With, the, with, yeah. with my penis size and that added on top of it, it becomes very hard to get into Lily. But uh, we happen to know a couple friend of ours that is using the larger size basilisk to actually help with some fun stretching that they're doing because she's mm -hmm. into fisting and they're trying to work that up. So the basilisk has been great for that. So it's definitely usable for um, a lot of different body types if you can work up to it. Now we get to get into my favorite. <laughs> yes, Lily, we saved the best for last. Lily's favorite is the bad dragon cock sheath. Now it's a fantasy sheath. It's also a bit indescript. It does kind of have a knot. It's not too large, and it has some, like, shapes on it. Oh, and by the way, it is an open-ended one, so the head of the cock is actually out of it, which is really nice for me because I get to feel a lot more while wearing it. Um, so it would actually, the sheath starts after the glands or after the head of my, my cock and then goes down the shaft there. Um, so, Lily, why do you like this one so much? I love this one mostly probably because I can feel your penis for one on the tip and feeling that warmth head go in is like that's one of the things that turns me on the most mm. but then feeling the ridges and this different type of texture along with the um it does have a little bit of a knot which is really nice it's different than the cadejo which has a much bigger knot this one i can actually fit inside of me with max or with that playing with a regular dildo uh so that's one of the reasons why i like it because i can actually get a knot inside of me yeah that's right and we all know how much we love knots on this show. Yes. Wow. Well, you know, I'm really glad you guys mentioned that they can be used with a regular dildo and you don't have to have a partner to play with them. I have never tried a sheath because I just assumed, oh, this is a partner toy. And for the blog, I don't test partner toys generally. So mm -hmm. my interest is peaked. I'm going to have to get a sheath now. I've got a shot. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I think many. you really should. And I would recommend it's kind of silly. We have this really cheap 
like hard plastic vibrator that we have, which is not useful on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you, everyone's been to a sex store and seen one of these things. They're super cheap. They take like two C batteries or something like that. Mm-hmm. But where they do come in handy, where they're really perfect, is for the sheaths. You put that inside of the sheath, and now all of a sudden it has a nice body safe silicone texture, and it's a vibrator. You can just twist Ooh. that bottom and make it faster or slower. Mm-hmm. So both Lily and I have made use of these on our own for penetration purposes with using that vibrator before, so I'd highly recommend it. Oh, so you can turn them into a vibe to, yeah, sign me up. Yeah, that's absolutely. That's a good deal. Oh, that's awesome. I did not know that. <laughs> One thing we just discovered before the show and haven't had a chance to actually try sexually yet is we realized that I can blow in the end of one of these, <laughs> uh, specifically the, the fetish zone canine, and it actually inflates a little bit. It doesn't inflate to the point of bursting because it actually has the small hole at the end for the, for the cum to escape, but there's enough pressure there that you could inflate it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, That's but we cool. have to be really careful with that because you don't want to get too much air inside of the um, the vagina. I can't do it. <laughs> Here I, we are blowing on sex toys again. I don't know. I don't. You have should have a whole segment air. about you know what noises sex toys makes when you blow on them. <laughs> 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 so one of the toys that we forgot to mention that we have here is the equine, and. Uh, what that makes me think of is the other part where these sheaths are really important. So pet play and pony play, something we talk about a lot here, subject we absolutely love. Pet and pony players love having these toys. Uh, I know that I like wearing them. It really helps get you into that headspace when you look down. Oh, what's this? It's not my normal boring human cock, but instead I have this mm-hmm. awesome horse cock. You know, it's really like powerful in that way. And, you know, a lot of people will wear them in even a non-sexual context to help them get into that headspace. So, after talking about penis size and sheets and all sorts of things, why don't you guys all come on down to the Telegram chat and, and talk about this kind of thing of what your experience of, experiences have been with the cock sheets. We'd love yeah. to hear about it. Yeah, I mean, when you're listening to this podcast right now, we're talking right into your ear holes, and it's a one-way street. Why not make it a two-way street? Come talk to us. And who knows, maybe we'll even mention you on the show. Yeah, you never know. And we have some awesome people in that chat. We have some toy makers. We have lots of toy collectors, bloggers, things. It's it's a cool place to be, and it's a happening chat. Like, it yeah. is active all it's, the time. So It's been blowing up lately, and it's a, yeah. going to end up being responsible for me not having a job soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> And this is why, Max, I keep all of my notifications on silent at work. Yes. Yes. Join the Telegram chat. Don't put your notifications on silent unless you're me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that'll just about do it for us today. Uh, thank you for listening to the Trisexuals podcast. I'm Max Chameleon. I'm Lily Chameleon. And I'm Kit. Remember to rate us on iTunes. Tell your friends. And if anyone asks, I'm actually hung like Slapner. You know what they say about guys with big feet? They can walk faster to download the latest trisexual podcast. (laughs) And you always know it's not the size of the penis that matters, it's the length of the tongue and how you use it. Oh, so true. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, thanks everyone. Hope to see you in Telegram. His one skin hangs down to his two skin. His two skin hangs down to his three. His three skin hangs down to his four skin. His four skin hangs down to his knee. Roll back, roll back, roll back your foreskin for me, for me. Roll back, roll back, roll back his foreskin for me.